Welcome back to another Fusion 360 tutorial. Today we are on day three, and today we are gonna learn how to make these 3D printable cable clips within Fusion 360. With that said, let's get started. So by now you should have opened up a blank new canvas within Fusion 360. The first thing we need to do here is hover over to create and create a new component. From here, let's go ahead and name this to component to 3D printable cable organizer. After that's done, press OK. From here, what we need to do now is create a sphere for our design. Now, Fusion 360 allows us to create primitives without having, go, having to go into the sketch environment and create it that way. So what we want to do now is hover over to create and then circle or go all the way down until you find sphere. Now, we have a couple of different options here, but the main one we want to use is sphere. And now Fusion 360 is prompting us to select the plane to create this sphere. We were going to want to select this bottom plane here and then selecting the origin and then dragging out the sphere to 20 millimeters. And you can do that by selecting this little arrow and you can change the size of this as well. Additionally, you can also manually change the size by hovering over to this right hand side uh, dialog box and then changing the diameter within this little section here. After that's done, press OK. Now, one thing you may have noticed is that right now, as we currently have this sphere within our plane or within our canvas, we really don't need this whole sphere in order to create this design. So what we need to do now is split this sphere in half in order to get part that we basically need for the cable tie or the cable organizer. So let's go ahead and toggle back on our origin as we will be needing that. And from here, let's go ahead and type S on our keyboard. This brings up the design shortcuts menu and then type in split body. Now you should see there is two options. There's a split body option here, and then there's a select body priority. We're gonna wanna use the split body option as the first one or the main option. And then from here, what this allows us to do is to select a body within Fusion 360 and then use a plane as a point of reference to cut that body however we wanna cut it. In this instance, we are going to cut it directly in half. So let's go ahead and select this body here. And from here, we can also go ahead, toggle back down our browser, and then turn off the body, select the splitting tool to this bottom plane down in the center, which is the one we just used. And now you should see kind of like this general outline, outline of the blue body or the blue body that uh, we have created, and then a circular kind of plane cut around it. So let's go ahead and toggle back on our body. After that's done, press OK. Now you should see we have a two two bodies within our browser. We have body one, which is the bottom, and then body two, which is the top. From here, we actually don't need the bottom of this, so let's go ahead and turn that off. And now we have the top part of our design for our cable organizer. So the next thing we need to do here is to create a plane um, along our design here in order to create that little slot or that circular hole which allows cables to fit through. So let's go ahead and press S on our keyboard and type in plane within our browser or within our design shortcuts menu. The next thing we need to do here is select the opt or select the feature which basically allows us to create a tangent to our design here which is circular. And since this is in a flat surface, this is gonna be very much different compared to when we're sketching on a face or sketching on a, something like a flat surface. So the option we're gonna to wanna to select here is plane tangent to face at point, which basically allows us to select a face and then a point, a reference to create a plane. In this instance, the point is going to be the origin. And now you should see that Fusion 360 has created a plane that's pretty much sitting onto the sphere itself. After that's done, press OK. One really cool and unique feature about Fusion 360 is that it basically allows us to create planes at anywhere within our canvas. So we can essentially create a plane here and use this to create a sketch, which can then affect exactly what we're doing here um, as we proceed forward. So from here, what we wanna do now is hover over to create sketch, select this plane, and now what we wanna do here is to create basically the outline of what's gonna cut into our sphere. So from here, let's hover over to center diameter circle, selecting the center, dragging this out, and let's drag this out to about six millimeters. So now you should have a center diameter circle with a radius or a diameter of six millimeters. From here, you can see that we kind of have this circle free floating, meaning that we can kind of move it around. In order to fix that, we can go ahead and create a line 
pressing L on our keyboard, selecting the center of our circle down to the origin, clicking this little check mark. And from here, what we can do is set this to be at a right angle just so we can dimension this. So if we press D on our keyboard, we can select this edge and this line here. And you can see that our line is technically not straight. It's 89.89163106278, which it's technically not straight. So we can go ahead, ahead and set this to 90. And now this line is completely constrained at a 90 degree angle. So we can't move it left or right, but we can move it up or down. So from here, if we wanted to, we can also set a dimension for this line for the height of it by pressing D on our keyboard, selecting this line, and then from here, let's go ahead and set this to five millimeters. After that's done, you should have a line distance of five millimeters, making sure that it is at a right angle, 90 degrees, and the radius of your circle should be six millimeters. Let's also go ahead and create the top portion, which is gonna be kind of like a square that's gonna allow us to cut into our design. Now additionally, keep in mind, there's many ways of doing this, but I'm going to show you the quick and simple way without it get, getting too complex into this. So let's go ahead and create a two point rectangle, selecting one edge of this circle, dragging this out, and then just kind of completing it towards the other side of the circle here. As you can kind of see this little bottom section kind of match up with your circle, it doesn't have to be perfect. And we'll go ahead and fix that in just a bit. From here, now you should have basically a rectangle that's sitting right directly above our circle. And what we need to do here is basically center this rectangle directly in the middle so that way it just looks cleaner and a little bit nicer. So from here, by pressing L on your keyboard, selecting this bottom center of our circle, dragging it up, finding the very dead center of our rectangle, and press OK. Now, as you can see, we currently have our bottom line fully constrained, but this top line is not, meaning that we can actually shift this over left and right, and this could pretty much affect our design. So what we want to do now is go ahead and set or use the parallel constraint located at the very top, which basically allows us to create parallel lines. In this instance, since these lines are not parallel, we can actually use it for reference in order to keep things nice, straight, and organized. So from here, if we were to select this top line here and then this bottom line, now our lines are fully parallel and they're fully dimensioned out. And essentially now this rectangle is not going to shift left or right at all. Additionally, what we could also do is set a dimension for the width of this. So for example, if we select this edge and this edge, we can change this to something like three millimeters. Once that's done, we can also set this, the height of this to maybe something like four millimeters. After that's done, finish sketch. Now you basically have the general outline of our profile that's going to cut directly into this circle here. So what we need to do now is by hovering over to these four profiles or these six profiles here, by pressing E on your keyboard, we can go ahead and cut right through by pushing this arrow to the other side and pressing OK. Now you have this basic look or this basic overview of what this cable organizer looks like and at this point we could pretty much call it and it'd be you know, we could pretty much call it a day basically it's practically done but we want to make our designs like a little bit neater and nicer so in order to do that let's go ahead and create a fillet in order to make these cables slide in a little bit easier so by pressing s on our keyboard and typing in fillet we can go ahead and create a fillet for these top two faces here. So by selecting this top face and then this top face, we can go ahead and move this arrow inward. And now you can see that we have our fillet protruding into our design here, which basically makes it a little bit easier for our cable to slide in and making sure that you, know, it, you have a better experience when you do actually use the product. Additionally, one really unique feature about Fusion 360 is that although we are creating a fillet for this edge or for that face there, we can actually create multiple fillets without having to create another fillet within our timeline down below. So for example, as of right now, there's a dialog box on the right hand side. What we want to do here is select this add selection set. And what this allows us to do is to select another edge or another face along our uh, body and in which we can use to fill it, which could be a completely different radius or different distance compared to what this radius value is here. So for example, if I were to select this edge here and this edge here, and if I were to move this inward, this could be a completely different value. For example, this could be one millimeter, while the very top could be 
1.5 millimeters. As you can see, if we press OK, now we have basically have the inner workings of our cable organizer here. Additionally, one thing I do want to note, since every cable is different, if you have a little bit thinner cable, like maybe an Apple iPhone cable, you can go ahead and change the distance of this rectangle by hovering over to the sketch that we just created and double clicking on that. Or you can hover over to your browser menu on the left hand side and then double clicking on the sketch as well. Additionally, if you want to change the size, you can change this from three to four. But just keep in mind, if you were to change this, this will directly affect your fillets as shown later on here which if you by any chance don't have an issue pop up, then great. But if not, or if you do have an issue pop up, then you would have to fix that. But if you don't, then great. So let me go ahead and go back and revert this back to three. Finish sketch. And now we have the general look of our design. Additionally, since we are making this uh, or we're 3D printing this, I would highly recommend 3D printing this with TPU as it makes it a little bit easier for you to fit your cables inside. And additionally, since TPU, you know, you could kind of fold this inward and um, it makes it a little bit easier to basically for the cable placement compared to just regular PLA where you might have to force it into, in, into the design itself. Additionally, one thing I also want to create here is the cable as shown in the thumbnail. Now, at this point, we're pretty much done with our design. But if you want to stick around and see exactly how to create that cable, let me show you exactly how to do it. So from here, if we wanted to create that cable, let's go ahead and hover to over to create sketch. Then from here, let's hover over to the center of our design. And you can see that we have a plane dead center or in the center of our design here. Let's go ahead and select this plane. You can kind of see it's highlighted once you select it. And now what we want to do is create a center diameter circle. So by hovering over to center diameter circle, you're going to want to find the very center of this or what appears to be the very center. It doesn't have to be perfect. Draw this out and make this five millimeters. After that's done, let's go ahead and reorient our design. Pressing E on our keyboard. Let's go ahead and in the extrude menu on the right hand side. Let's go ahead and set the direction to symmetric. Let's extrude this outward. And now we kind of have like this cable looking feel in the center of our cable organizer. After that's done, press OK. From here, what we want to do now is create a rectangle at the very front. So by hovering over to create sketch, let's select the uh, circle or the face of our cylinder here and then going over to create rectangle center rectangle finding the center of our circle and then just drawing it out it doesn't have to be perfect I'm gonna leave this at 5 and then the width to 7.5 now that we have our rectangle Pressing E on your keyboard, let's go ahead and select these three profiles, extrude this outward to about maybe eight millimeters. And now we kind of have like this cable with our front piece here. Let's go ahead and create a fillet for this. So by pressing F on our keyboard, selecting all four of these edges on our rectangle, and let's fillet this inward to make this a little bit nicer and neater, maybe about 1.5. Lastly, let's create the last piece, creating a new sketch, selecting this front face here, selecting create, rectangle, center rectangle. Let's go ahead and draw another rectangle outwards. Instead, this time, this one is going to have a much wider width, or the width is going to be uh, quite wide while the height is going to be quite low. Let's make this one, and let's make this six. From here, pressing E on your keyboard, selecting this profile, Extruding this outward, say by six millimeters. One more time, let's create another fillet. And then just dragging this inward and press OK. Now we created our basic cable organizer. Now the main objective of this video was to create this little cable organizer shown on the right hand side. At this point, Everything else is pretty much unnecessary since you probably won't be 3D printing that. But if you do, then let me know how it goes. But with that said, let's go ahead and import that into our slicer by right-clicking our body, which is our cable organizer, saving as mesh, clicking OK. And now if we import this into our slicer, 
you can see that now we have our design dead center and this is quite a small print so it shouldn't take you that long even if you're on an ender 3. I would highly recommend at setting the layer light to layer height to something like 0 0.08 slicing it and then from here you can see that even though we're printing at a 0.4 nozzle you can still capture a lot of those details within our print additionally if you also could please try to print this with tpu as you it's probably a lot better with tpu anyway since this is a cable organizer where you'll be fitting cables in and out of the design so with that said that pretty much wraps up today's video let me know your guys' thoughts and opinions down below in the comment section and as well as if you guys haven't already please make sure to join the 3d printing community as we have all these videos and resources and as well as the stl files for these projects listed for free within the community down below in the description if you guys like this video and want to subscribe to the channel feel free to do so but with that said this is brandon signing out see you guys in the next one peace